Hi there folks, my name is Neverwind24 and welcome to another little review of a Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on. So today we're going to be having a look at is what is probably one of the most historic and important airfields in British aviation history. Uh, of course, I am referring to Farnborough in the United Kingdom. Uh, and this particular rendition of Farnborough is brought to us uh, by Burning Blue Designs. So we're going to be going through, we're going to have a look at the detail and some of the uh, changes and updates that Burning Blue Design have applied to this airport. Uh, and then we're going to do a circuit around it before giving our final thoughts to be able to showcase this, uh, as I said, this very historic airport um, that really has served as the cradle of aviation in the United Kingdom. Uh, so as we uh, fly down the the uh, sort of runway here with the drone uh, camera, so first off to say that this is a, a little this is a, this is very much an overdue review from me. Uh, I uh, I've had this product for some time and I've just never managed to actually be able to get the review video out the door. So I am of course I am making the I am making uh, uh, adjustments to that and of course I am fixing that res that uh, situation now. So this airport was actually one of the first airports uh, released by Burning Blue Designs for Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, gives us the airport as it appears uh, in 2020. Uh, but the developer has gone through and updated the, the airport multiple times as the sim has evolved uh, and uh, dealt with a number of issues. And I think that this is now at a state which is uh, looking even better than it was at first release. So probably a great time for us to be able to review it. So as I said, this is an updated airport layout uh, as it appeared in 2020 um, with a lot of the custom buildings, particularly the custom hangars, which we'll have a look over on uh, a little bit later on, uh, and a lot of the details that was just missing from the default rendition of the airport. Now, like a lot of uh, developers, uh, the team at Burning Blue Designs have actually focused on not just uh, uh, giving us the major airport buildings, but also paying attention to little details here as well. Uh, and this is probably one of the, the great examples of, of being able to see that here. By as we see the the, yeah, the airport fire sort of practice area uh, very much uh, in use. We've got a couple of the fire for custom fire vehicles here uh, for this area, along with all the materials for the fire operations. So uh, again, it's just one of those things that gives a little bit of additional life to your experience when flying in and out of this airport. Uh, along with uh, being the home of much uh, of sort of historical aviation uh, and pioneering aviation in the United Kingdom, um, it's actually also home to the uh, Air, uh, Air, Air, Air Inve Investigation uh, Board as well. Their office is here at Farnborough. And uh, a lot of people may know sort of, you know, where, you know, of course, we're, most of us have all heard of black boxes that are in aircraft. Uh, this is actually, Farnborough is one of the few locations around the world that actually has all the equipment to actually decrypt all of those black boxes. So often our air transport safety investigations uh, globally will end up here uh, in Farnborough for uh, review and, uh, and analysis of all the tapes. The airport also gives us um, the the closed runway uh, 36 and 18 because uh, it's been turned into a taxiway now. It's no longer an active runway, but it still sort of shows the you know the, the faded markings on the runway, which is a, a nice little touch as well. And it's, uh, and of course during the pandemic, uh, there were many aircraft that would actually be parked along this area as well. Uh, continuing on as we go around the per perimeter of the airport, not only has the developer paid attention to the airport itself, but uh, is what is also uh, often just as important, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to say more important, but I think definitely is just as important uh, as modelling the interiors of the airport uh, and the main airside buildings, is also modelling the, the materials which is, uh, which is land side as well, uh, by modelling all of the different buildings and, and materials outside the, the region. Now, one of the things about uh, Farnborough, of course, is that it's a home. It's one of the, it's a it's a home of BAE Systems, uh, where they actually sort of have one of their manufacturing and as some of their manufacturing and maintenance facilities. Uh, and as we uh, go around their uh, their their warehouse here, we can see uh, they, a a Eurofighter Typhoon, which of course BAE handled the the maintenance of in the United Kingdom on display. And now something as well, you might sort of you you probably notice all of these displays and sort of all these. Uh, 
structures here on the uh, pavilion, sort of pavilion, sort of grandstand area taking taking shape here, because Farnborough is the home of one of the world's uh, greatest aviation trade fairs and air shows. It happens uh, biannually, so it is uh, really interesting that the developers chosen to actually sort of portray this airfield during the setup phase for a Farnborough air show. What I'm really hoping for is that at some point in the future that we may actually see a Farnborough air show uh, like pack or add-on be added on to this add-on as well or maybe make it as an option um, so you can actually so we can actually see the the airport as she appears during her uh, glory as she can be seen when it's open to the public during the the uh, the biannual air show uh, and see some of the trade pavilions I think that would be a really cool add-on, a little add-on I know Orbix did that previously for their Avalon uh, airport for FSX and prepared where they actually did sort of two versions of the airport and you could sort of switch between them you could switch between sort of normal day-to-day operations and then you could switch to the air show they call it sort of air show mode uh we could actually see the airport and actually sort of had ai traffic operating uh at the airport during to sort of replicate the air show function so it's a it's it's a it's it's they're hinting at it whether it happens or not is a whole nother thing but i really hope that uh burning blue designs do give some thought to that well at least i think I think it's. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that they've given some thought to it. Uh, whether or not we see it or not is another conversation to have uh, uh, as well. But I can but hope. So as we uh, continue on on here, sort of again all, all the perimeter and all the gates modeling, we can go through and we can see you know all the uh, again all the various uh, land side buildings immediately uh, near the airport, especially the, the the buildings that you'll see on approach and in your circuit. So again, it's that nice little attention to detail and showing off some of the cool features of this airport and the surrounding areas. Now, uh, one of the other, again, just sort of showing off the some of the detail that's come through uh, in this airport as well, is that there's a, uh, because I was, I was talking before about how uh, this is, Farnborough is sort of the, the cradle and the home uh, of, uh, of of UK aviation in many ways. Um, so it's also the, it was the home, well, it is the home of the Royal Aircraft Establishment, uh, who are probably most known for their Raspberry Ripple colour schemes on their aircraft when they were in the testing regimes. Uh, and and as part of uh, Farnborough's sort of homage to its own history, it has a small little museum with a number of aircraft that were operated uh, here out of Farnborough uh, on display that you can go and visit as part of sort of a local air museum. So it's actually really cool that they've actually recreated that air museum here uh, in the sim by actually putting a number of those Raspberry Ripple scheme aircraft there. Uh, the, the only sort of downside of what I did notice is that the 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 Lynx model and the Harrier model are somewhat sunk in into the the terrain but otherwise it's still great to see they're actually here and unless you're flying around with the drone camera you'd never realize that they were actually sunk into the ground so it's yeah I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll forgive them for now um, but you know if I'm picking holes in that you can tell that it's uh, it's a struggle to pick uh, holes in this fantastic add-on so again we're just going to go through and having a look at some of the buildings and some of the detritus that is living around uh, on a land side here uh, again, sort of next, like a lot of modern airports, there is an extensive industrial uh, and and uh, commercial park, sort of just off uh, just off the airfield. Uh, with this in particular one, sort of, uh, and has been recreated, including a mini garage, uh, sort of BMW mini garage dealership here, complete with actual minis. I think actually in the car park there, which is kind of cool. Well, at least uh, an Asobo equivalent of a, a mini, anyway. Uh, moving on as we continue through here, most of the buildings, including the Gloucester Pub, has been uh, the, with the Hungry Horse, have all been modelled here in the sim as well. Uh, it's just it's just little touches like this that I think are really really kind of cool. Couple of buildings don't match with the overhead photo with the the uh, sort of overlaid photo reel, but for the most part, it definitely is matching to the experience here. Uh, again, the just going through, sort of just ducking back along here, we've got sort of some of the uh, old, sort of one of the old um, uh, maintenance sort of sheds here. Uh, they're all modelled. And 
an interesting little thing as well that I just it's just again small thing, but something I noticed is that they actually paid attention to the the surrounding airport security uh, security fences, and they are actually consistent all the way around the airport. It does actually they have actually modelled all of the fences because there's even some payware airports that I've noticed occasionally miss a few fences here and there. So small thing, most people are never going to know it, but it's kind of cool that it's there. And following along the road here, all handcrafted in detail, so they didn't rely on just sort of photo real sort of overlay here. They've actually gone through and actually modeled all of the roads, have all been added with correct road markings, and also included the old farm terminal building from its uh, operations when it was uh, not only sort of a military slash sort of uh, testing field, but it did actually serve as a commercial airport uh, for a quite a number of years. So the old terminal building, uh, complete with the old control tower, have all been modelled and brought to life here in the sim. So there's a lot here for, for nostalgic aviators as well as for those of you wanting to get your experience as, uh, as close to real as possible. One of the other ten big tenants and major tenants here uh, at Farnborough is Gulfstream Aviation. So Gulfstream, obviously, uh, very famously for I mean, being known for their luxury, luxurious private jets, uh, maintain a maintenance and sales facility uh, here. And I believe this is actually their head of their, this is the, the, the home of their UK and European operations, is actually here at Farnborough. Uh, so the, their entire handle, hangar and FBO has been fully modelled. Uh, also includes a star location inside the hangar as well so if you're looking at uh, so if you do want to sort of uh, take one of your uh, take one of your biz jets and uh, be able to start in the hangar you are absolutely able to do that and you've got a number of other golf streams all being actively serviced around you at the time looks like we've got an AI aircraft currently living in that parking space at the moment uh, going through as we sort of go on some of the some of the uh, ground uh, ground textures and ground poly and sort of and runway and taxiway textures again all airports uh, taxiway markers have all been accurately done all the textures for all the taxiways are also being given a custom work as well so they're not they're, they're not just sort of reusing sort of default textures actually sort of etching in the uh, marks of the taxiway into the taxiway which is something that is at least in my experience, fairly unusual. I don't know about real life, but I know in sim it is a fairly unusual thing to see. So great to see that the team actually uh, renditioned that here for this one. Uh, custom uh, modeling of the airport firehouse as well with various bits of activity going on inside uh, with vehicles parked inside and out as well. So I sort of just lose control of the camera for a second there. Uh, so again, just that nice little bit of detail just coming through and helping to bring your sim to life over on both air and ground side. We've even got a, a bus stopping in at the uh, at the bus stop nearby. I think it's. Uh, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be animated throughout the entire bus route, but uh, it has been stuck at that bus stop for a little bit while. Maybe he can't get it out of reverse at the moment, but you know, still nice guys to see it's animated. Again, as we continue on here, uh, various, uh, again, landside buildings, the old Costco, the America's uh, America's Revenge on the rest of the world, I sometimes feel, uh, has been modelled along with Costa Coffee. Like, I have mixed feelings about Costa Coffee, but I still remember one of my early, one of my first trips to the UK, I arrived and I was just desperately needing coffee, and I just went into a Costa and I made the, not sure if it was a mistake or not, but I uh, I went to the, the counter and I just said, I need the largest coffee that you sell, and I literally got a soup mug full of coffee, and uh, needless to say, I was buzzing after that. But that was my first Costa coffee experience in the UK, so I always look at Costa and have a bit of a chuckle whenever I see their sign. Uh, continuing on, another important tenant here uh, at Farnborough is Flight Safety International, uh, sort of uh, a team uh, that to do a lot of flight training, aviation safety, and flight simulation, ex uh, flight simulation training and experiences. Uh, so they're a global company, and their uh, UK and European headquarters are located here at Farnborough. And again, just continuing around the periphery of the airport and seeing a number of all the number of airport and non-airport buildings modeled in beautiful detail.
Again, it's going to be the, uh, some of the old taxiways with various uh, parking spots, both for static AI objects and for uh, parking for you as a and you and AI to experience. And again, this is the this is probably one of the the biggest. Uh, things to notice when going from default versus uh, so the custom version of this airport is the the airside buildings uh, on this side of the airport uh, have this very sort of you know un- unique sort of rolling wave sort of pattern uh, of their design, and there's something that is definitely not captured uh, from the default experience. So the custom sort of runway, uh, so the custom taxiway markings and the custom design of these buildings uh, really help it sort of make you feel that you are actually here uh, at Farnborough. Of course, there is, this is a mixed-use airport, so of course there are helicopter operations here as well. So we have a number of uh, heli, uh, helicopter, static, heli- static helicopter object, uh, objects. I don't believe I saw any uh, helipad starts, uh, though perhaps we will see those added in a future update. Custom control tower model also included and provided for us uh, in the uh, in sim here, uh, complete with uh, an interior with a couple of uh, controllers and the usual sort of a uh, couple of nice little uh, nice little Easter eggs here for this one as well, complete with uh, radar sort of traffic options, a rendition of the Bernie Blue Design website, uh, and even their Discord channel. So I'm not sure if these uh, air traffic controllers how how much work getting done today but seems to be a fairly quiet day here at farmer anyway but there you go like <laughs> nice i've never seen a developer put their discord in the scenery before kind of kind of cool that's that's kind of cool kind of nice awesome uh again all the airport uh, surrounding uh, buildings all model and hangars uh we also include another uh in hangar start here in the main farmer airport uh, fbo uh and that's the aircraft that we're going to be in bay number two and we'll be uh taking off and doing our circuit around this airport and having a look at it from the sky uh very shortly in our optica and uh, just sort of uh, continuing on and as we uh, round out sort of the views on the ground here, again, just seeing the, the, the detail that's come along on the ground markings to actually make sure that everything's been brought to life, custom win, you know, use of custom windsock, uh, animated windsock objects as well, um, all taxiway signage, uh, and again, just uh, another FBO here with a variety of aircraft with custom start options for you to start over on this side of the field as well. Uh, otherwise, uh, checking out all the various uh, business and turboprop aircraft uh, in in the hangars here so there's a lot you know this uh, for me is just really sort of surmises some of the great ways that um, developers can actually bring to life a scenery by you know taking control and actually you know modeling not only the the main external buildings but bringing the small little details of you know construction areas of 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 airport of you know airport firehouses you know the 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 little interior details that just give so much detail and bring so much life to the airport uh, particularly over on that uh, on the uh, show side of the airport all right, now that we've uh, had a look at it from ground level, let's uh, jump into our Optica and let's go for a uh, flight and a circuit around the field uh, before we finish off the review video today. So, saying, so, so Farnborough has a very, very rich aviation history because it uh, it was uh, one of the earliest airports in the United Kingdom uh, and would be used for uh, bo- or for all manager all manner all manner of uh, heavier than air flight, uh, including uh, some of the old airship era as well. I suppose this was this lighter than air flight already, isn't it? Um, so it's, it has varied aviation history, uh, and some of that is actually also represented, which we'll uh, see during our little uh, circuit of the area as well. Uh, it would then go on uh, to become uh, sort of a proven, ga- proven, proven ground for many new aviation designs, uh, being a part of the, of course, as we discussed before, the, the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Uh, and uh, they would operate for many years from here, and uh, many uh, revolutionary sort of concepts and designs would be first tested uh, in, at, at Farnborough. Uh, would do go on to so you can see many different varied aircraft appear at, at, over at Skies, and it would be uh, operated uh, both as a, a, a 
an RAF and as a civilian airport for uh, many years and continues to be uh, sort of uh, an important uh, hub for business aircraft. And you see, of course, an important business executive waiting for his uh, flight there. And we've got the uh, animated, fully animated active radar, primary radar service there from the tower. And as you can see, as we're uh, taxiing along, the, the developer has also done a custom terrain mesh for the airport as well. So you do get the undulations uh, just like it is in real life for the taxiways and the runways. The runway at Farnborough as well has a fairly significantly displaced threshold, so the landing distance available is fairly small. There's plenty of takeoff distance, uh, but it does have a fairly minimal uh, uh, landing distance available for this runway. So it is, um, I'm not going to say a challenge for aviators coming in because you know it's still it's still a decent enough length of runway, but it is something to be aware of if you're coming in with some of the larger, heavier aircraft. All right, lined up on the runway. Okay, landing lights are on, taxi lights can be turned off, strobes are on. All right, and we are good to depart. Rotated a little early on that one. It's been a while since I've flown this Optica. I think I okay, can. You probably tell that. All right, uh, and I personally said uh, this aircraft is a is a pretty interesting aircraft. I said I I just love the Optica because it looks so odd, but it's a, it offers such great visibility that I think it's a, a perfect sort of aircraft to be able to do some uh, observation uh, in within while we are uh, sort of checking out this scenery. So of course, all of the approach, uh, the important approach details of all we models, you can see the the rabbits uh, and all the the ILS glow slopes uh, are all done here. In fact, Farnborough would actually be sort of again sort of speaking of sort of firsts and and tests with this uh, with this airfield. Uh, the Farnborough would be the the place where the first ever ILSs were ever attempted and automatic landing. Uh, systems were ever actually tested. They were all done here at Farnborough. So whenever you're flying your uh, ILS approach into uh, into whatever airport you may be flying to around the world, um, take a moment to, to sort of think that and, and, and realise that you know the, those first experiments that brought us uh, ILS uh, were actually all conducted here at Farnborough. Uh, and uh, there's a, there was there was uh, some famous uh, footage and it was first demonstrated to the public also at Farnborough during a Farnborough air show uh, where the, an ILS system was fitted to, and I've forgotten the name of the aircraft now, I want to say it was a Bristol Britannia, but I might be wrong. Um, and uh, and there's, uh, my, my father was actually present at that uh, at that uh, Farnborough air show at the time. And he said, you could actually see you know, the pilots were actually sort of there in the cockpit, they were in the cockpit and they were completely sort of, you know, hands, you know, hands sort of, you know, hands sort of almost raised above their heads. So you could see them looking at the cockpit as the aircraft flew itself down into landing. And he said it was just such a, a, an amazing sight to see and sort of such a, a huge sort of technological, um, thing to realize that that was going to now be possible so it's uh as i said this aircraft this airfield is home to such amazing technological innovations when it comes to aviation so having it created recreated in such a beautiful detail is pretty damn exciting 
you know, it's flying over the estate here, the sort of industrial estate and the, uh, the, the old terminal building there. Now, you might see sort of just off my wingtip just there, there's another sort of uh, interesting structure there, and that forms part of the historical precinct here at Farnborough. So that uh, sort of uh, bunch of hoops, almost like a tunnel ball, tun giant tunnel ball tunnel. Uh, so what that is, or what that is the re re remnants of, is an old airship hangar. As I said, like yeah, this is uh, an important part of aviation history in the United Kingdom for many, many reasons, and one of the aircraft types that operated out of here were airships. Um, so this is where the uh, uh, some of the earliest uh, British airships um, were actually constructed, and that is the, the remnants of one of the uh, air, uh, airship hangars. And it's still preserved to this day. Turned into a bit of a park uh, with some memorials and some uh, information there. So it's, it's again, it's a, it's a, it's something that's that I love about flight simulation is how we can help preserve aviation history uh, by doing, yeah, you know, by by recreating these items here as well. As we're flying over here, some of the more nearby custom-built buildings, and it really does blend absolutely seamlessly uh, from the, the the surrounding, you know, from from the airport details. It, it blends almost, you know, pretty almost, almost seamlessly uh, into the surrounding photo reel, and it is designed and it is fully compatible with the uh, UK World update. Uh, they did have a couple of bugs and a, a few glitches uh, when that update first came out, uh, but they. I've definitely resolved all of them now to find a pretty damn impressive piece of kit here at this airport now. All right, so now that we've uh, had a look at this airport and admired some of the, uh, say, said, admired it from the the outs from the uh, from the air, let's uh, turn. See if I can turn. I may regret trying to turn sharply on a final here. Yeah, the English Electric Lightning Gate Guardian there. Okay, there we go. This aircraft is surprisingly maneuverable, uh, the Optica. It's, it's a, it offers such incredible vision, and I love the Optica, but it can be can be a, a handful to fly sometimes. All right, so watching the trims, watching the power. Flaps out. Very floaty with these double slotted flaps. <laughs> Very floaty with the double slotted flaps. Definitely a long landing here. There we go. Right on the stall is coming in there. There we go. Okay. Clean the aircraft up. And we'll taxi back and give our final thoughts. Alrighty, so final as we have we've uh, parked and shut down there. Final thoughts on Farnborough from Burning Blue Designs. So this, uh, as I sort of started the review here, this, this is the start of the video. This video review is, is very much overdue, but um, as this airport has been out for for, for for quite a while now, but I really want. I think this is actually a great thing to point out that the developer has stayed committed to their product. So this shows uh, a development that not only was it done with extreme care and, and developed into an incredibly high standard of detail, um, the developer's also gone through and made sure it's continued to evolve and continue to grow. Uh, when I first installed this airport, uh, when it first came out, um, the air show sort of prep area on the other side was not as fully complete as it is now. Uh, in fact, there's only sort of a couple of, of buildings and that's a lot more, there's a lot more there than there was before. Um, the uh, museum sort of uh, memorialising um, the efforts of the Royal Aircraft Establishment, that has been added, overhauled and added in. And a lot of the land side details have also sort of continued to evolve and, and be added in um, throughout the evolution and the life of this add-on. So um, it really, this is, this is a great testament 
to Bernie Blue Designs and their commitment to providing all of us a uh, fantastic range, a uh, fantastic quality product, um, and staying committed to their product as well, and not just sort of going, well, it's released and now you're on your own. Like the the developer truly is making sure that you know they continue to support it and continue to give us an amazing quality product. And as we uh, sort of just quickly have a look at a, a closer view of the old airship hangar park here. Like, it's just, sometimes, sometimes I, I, I really do sort of love uh, this, you know, I, I, I love our... That was, that's a bit random. Uh, apparently, sometimes the model doesn't load in. Um, so, I, I, I do absolutely love the, 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 the level of detail and the effort that this developer's gone to. Um, in terms of bugs that I found, that is, this one right here is an extremely rare one. And honestly, I don't think it's an issue with Burning Blue Design's design of the airport. I think it's more probably my system. Uh, because overall, like, th this airport has been greatly improved um, the, the longer it's been out. And it's been wonderful to see the developers continue commitment to it. Uh, it absolutely creates a, a true-to-life depiction of the airfield uh, as she pinned 2020. And really has is there's got a lot of detail in here that helps it bring it to life. So, if you're looking at a uh, an airfield that has is steeped in so much history, uh, and maybe looking for something as a, a different sort of uh, airport to visit in the United Kingdom, you really cannot go wrong with Burning Blue Design. So, with Burning Blue Designs Farnborough, uh, you really can't go wrong. Uh, as I said, in terms of faults and, and bugs, you said the the only one that sort of found was the the, the, the sometimes the, the textures on some of the models don't load. I believe that's more my system, not Burning Blue Design. Uh, so I'm going to you know, so I want to point that out. Um, the other one is is the couple of aircraft at the museum partly partly going through the terrain mesh. Again, 99% um, of the time when you see them, you're going to overfly them at a few hundred feet. You're not going to notice. So if that's what I'm having to look at to be able to find a bug in this airport, this airport's pretty damn cool. It's pretty damn amazing. Um, so folks, that does now round out the, the review for this video. Highly recommended from me. If you wanted to pick this one up and add this one to your flight simulation connection, new collection, you can pick this up from Burning Blue Designs from their web store, available now. And with that, folks, that does now round out this review. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter and on Twitch. Just search NovaWing24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.